Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Vatver 100 amp hour wall mount battery. Like I said, this is a 100 amp hour battery. This is lithium iron phosphate chemistry and you're right around 5.1 kilowatt hours worth of storage in this battery. You guys might have seen the Vatver rack battery review I did a while back and you're going to get most of the basic stats that you would have on that battery in this battery. So over voltage, under voltage protection, temperature protection as well, whether that be upper or lower and it also has BMS communication which the rack batteries don't have so that is one thing that they did add to these wall mount batteries not really sure why they put it on the wall mounts and not the rack batteries maybe the rack batteries are going to get it at some point but yeah it still is a JBD BMS in here but they have comms so they have CAN communication and RS-485 and this is a bit of a larger footprint than the EG4 wall mount battery that I reviewed maybe about two months ago so it'll be interesting to see how they arranged everything inside the case here. I already did a capacity test on the battery. We got right at 99.1 or something amp hours, like right in that area. And when that's happened in the past, it usually means it just needs to be cycled a couple more times to reach that 100 amp hour or 101. Usually VATRA batteries, because they have, or they typically anyway, have EVE cells in them, they'll usually go right around 101 to 103 uh, with a capacity test. So if I were to charge and discharge this uh, a couple times more, I'm sure it will get there. Sometimes it's just a matter of balancing the cells out to get that last little bit. So this does have BMS communication, but it also has Bluetooth, just like the rack batteries. And like I've mentioned in pretty much every video where the battery has a Bluetooth, I like that. I think they should all have that. Wall mounts, rack batteries, everything. Whether it's just to check the stats or change settings, anything like that, I like to have Bluetooth. It's a neat option to have. So I'll show you guys what comes with the battery first. Some of it's off the screen over here. So I'll focus in and show that. Then I'll show you how the mounting plate works for this battery. And then we'll do a teardown. Check it out and see what it looks like inside. So with the battery comes these four gauge cables here. Manual, obviously. These, which I have no idea what they do. Let me look in the manual. Little rubber fittings. Not quite sure on that. Probably will be obvious when I see it. Then they have different uh, communication cables for different inverters. So this is an SRNE communication cable, which I believe that's just a pass-through cable. So it's basically just an Ethernet cable. So I'm not sure why they have a specific for the GrowWatt and Mega Revo, because I believe those are pass-through cables too. Either way, it's pretty neat of them to include specific pinouts because Victron does have specific pinouts for their stuff. So it's neat for them to include that. As a matter of fact, it's the first time I've seen a battery come with the specific pinout cables for your gear. You can see the mounting plate up there. This is how it would fit in. It just slides into that notch, so it would settle right on that. The thing I don't care for right off the bat is the fact that the handles are on the back here, which in one way I guess is cool. Keeps the look of the battery sleek, but not so easy to mount it on the wall. G4 has handles on the side here. So that would make it a lot easier for mounting. It might not be as attractive or sleek looking once it's mounted, but it does help to have a, a, a handle on either side rather than have to lift it up from the top. Ultimately, I don't think the handles are that ugly on the other one and they're gonna make it easier to get up there. This is the only thing on the sides. The other one has nothing, but what they don't have, this is a BMS switch. They do not have a breaker, which is a real bummer. That's another negative as far as I'm concerned. I think all wall mounts and rack batteries should have their own dedicated breaker. And this does not have one, just a BMS switch here. Looking at the bottom, you can see these can be parallel. They've got two terminals on either one. And they just chose, looks like an M8 screw to go on the bottom here. And then they have covers, look like they stole this out of EcoWorthy's handbook here. But this is just covers they've got for over the terminals. You notice there's no dip switches here and I'm actually testing another battery with the same setup and it doesn't need it. So the original, so the master, so you hook this from can to the inverter, that automatically assigns this as master. If you have anything behind it, assuming this is the same as the other battery that I'm testing, then it auto assigns addresses for each battery after that. So one, two, three, four. So I can check with Vatver and see if that's the case with this, but I believe it is. If you don't see dip switches, then it auto assigns it for you. Oh, by the way, I figured out what those little plugs are for. They just plug the ethernet ports right there. It's funny they even included them. 
kind of nice though. Before I pop the top off, I thought I'd show you guys the screen. It's fully discharged because of the test I did. But it shows the basic info you're going to want to see. But also when you scroll over, you can set the protocols with this. So um, you can't get any simpler than that. You scroll over one screen and if you've got Pylon Tech, if you need uh, Die, which would be Solark, Victron. Yeah, it's got all the protocols right there. Very simple to get to. And you can see basic data and all the same stuff on their app as well. So I was able to pop the plug for the screen off there, but that's the cover right here. And then this does have a plastic cover over top of the cell. So let's get that off and check out what it looks like underneath. Okay, so clean looking build, which is pretty typical for Vatra. Most of what we see from them is very simplistic. Everything's lined up well, good wire management. And yeah, it's just clean. There's no other way to describe it. it there's nothing fancy with their builds, but everything is tidy. And check this out. For their main positive and negative, they're using just bus bars. So no cable here for this. And I actually like that. If you can insulate the bus bar and give it a nice tight run, uh, there's less chance for loss or any heating issues. That's actually pretty nice. They did, uh, these are custom bus bars here, so everything is bent beforehand. Looks good. The BMS, like I mentioned before, if I didn't, it's a JBD BMS, but this one does have communication as opposed to the other JBD that they have with no comms. And they do have, looks like four temperature sensors. Let me pan this up here. So you've got one two, three, so that's actually three, two, one, and number four right here. Every single Batra battery that I've seen uses Eve battery cells, but we'll go ahead and go the extra mile, see if we can pop this metal off. I'm not sure we'll be able to get down to where we can see the cells that they're using, but they're pretty much always Eves, like I said. Let's take a look. I can't get down there because they have adhesive on top of, they've got another insulation board down here. It's not fish paper, it's some kind of plastic. And they've got adhesive gluing that down to the tops of the cells. So yeah, everything is pretty tight there. I really can't get in there. But I would put money on the fact that these are 100 amp hour Eve cells in here. And you can see they're that short profile to be able to fit in this wall mount battery. So there are others in their other batteries are a little bit taller, probably up to there. So because these cells are going to be on their side, they have to really be bound up well. So they've got this one bracket right here. So, so this is on the bottom. This is the one that's going to be supporting the batteries. And between the cells and that bottom bracket that I pointed out, there's a piece of foam and then an insulation board as well. So that's really where the weight is going to be right here. And on the top end, they have the exact same thing. That piece of insulation board and then the foam. And then these brackets themselves are what's going to be holding the cells in. So this is going to be on the vents and the brackets, I don't know if I showed you guys, the brackets have another piece of foam on the bottom of them. Like I said, nothing fancy. All their wire leads are clean. Everything's going right to this shield that they've got over it, this insulation, then runs right to the BMS down here. Whereas other rack battery did not have pre-charge resistor, and I would probably bet that this one doesn't as well. You guys can see here, I'll focus in on the serial number in case you guys needed that. The only thing I would say about this build is what I've already mentioned, there's room enough for a breaker here, or really on this side. If this is their positive, that's fine. Just put the breaker on that side instead. You can leave the BMS switch over there if you want, but it really should be over here too, in my opinion. But yeah, it needs a breaker right here. Plenty of space. Big empty cavity down there. Plenty of room to put a breaker. So yeah, that would be the only thing I'd say about the build here. Last thing I wanted to check here, I'm setting the 12,000 XP to Pylon Tech. And I've got the communication cable hooked up into the battery. Let's see what it looks like here. Yeah, it looks like it worked right away. So on the 12,000 XP, I set it to Pylon Tech on the battery and the inverter. We've got 49 volts. And of course, 0% because the battery's dead. Let's take a look at the screen so we can match it up. 
yeah, 49 volts, 0%. And I'm plugged into the CAN communication right there, and that is going to the 12,000 XP. So yeah, that means 6,000 XP, 18 kPV. This battery can communicate with them using the Pylon Tech protocol. So guys, in summary, it is a nice battery. The, um, like I mentioned, the EG4 battery is a little smaller. So I measured it. It's right around, it's a little over an inch shorter and it's right around three quarters of an inch more narrow. So not a huge amount of space difference between the two, but there is, there's a good amount on the height anyway. These can be space savers for people that have a good amount of wall space, but not a bunch in the way of floor space. You could hang these. And these are right around, they hover right around $1,000. And if you've got some kind of deal from them, I guess it goes down a little bit below that. I've seen them in the low 900s. But yeah, they're usually right in the 950 to 1,000 range for these batteries. So their rack batteries are a little bit cheaper most times, but you do have communication capability with these batteries. If you put a central bus bar system in, that's probably the best bet rather than trying to daisy chain these. And then you may have you know, kind of overloaded amperage, depending on what size inverter you're going to use with them, then yeah, you could run it from a central bus bar system, run these batteries to that, and then run them to whatever inverter you're going to be using. Vatver as a whole, I think, does a good job as far as answering questions with people, although you're not going to be able to get anybody on the phone. It's going to be something where you're going to have to email them. And then as far as warranty issues, I really don't hear much bad about that either. I did get some feedback from one person that had a little trouble with it, but Overall, I've heard good things about their warranty as well. Pretty much every 48 volt battery review I do, people ask whether this can be tied in with other batteries. So unless it shares this same type of BMS, this battery isn't going to be able to communicate with, let's say, an EG4 wall mount battery or any of the other type of batteries unless it shares that same type of BMS. So Pylon protocol is the language it's going to speak to the inverter and the inverter to it. But BMS to BMS is a different language altogether. The only reason I mention that is if people are planning on tying this into an existing pack that they have, let's say they have a rack of other types of batteries and they want to use this, you can use it. You, you can parallel the cables into it, but you're not going to have communication between this unless you have something with a similar BMS type and they speak the same language. Even if it is the same type of BMS, if there's a different uh, protocol that people have put on it for their specific inverter type or battery type, then they're still not going to be able to communicate. So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. If people want to add this to another battery bank, you can add it as a pure battery storage, but not necessarily with communication. All right, guys, I will leave a link in the description below to this battery here. Let me know if you got any questions about it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.